What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you my PyCharm setup. A lot of you guys keep constantly asking me which tools do I use, which theme do I use, which plugins do I use and so on. And because my PyCharm setup is quite different from that of most people, and also because I recently added a couple of more plugins in addition to those that I already had installed, I thought that making a dedicated video might make a little bit more sense than just answering all the comments. So I'm going to switch the scene now and we're going to talk about my setup. First of all, the more plugins you add, the more bloated your setup is going to be. So if you already have some problems with performance, with uh, the loading time of PyCharm, maybe you don't want to install more plugins because it's just going to get slower and slower as you add more plugins. Uh, if you want to add more plugins, you go to File, you go to Settings and you go to Plugins. There you go. And you go to the marketplace to look for plugins. So you can look for themes, you can look for functionality, whatever. And in the install tub, you have your installed plugins. So the first thing that you probably notice here when you look at my setup is that I use a different theme than the default theme. I use a dark theme, but I don't use the default PyCharm dark theme. I use the one dark theme. So you just type one dark theme and you're going to see this, uh, this theme here. I think it's the second most installed theme. So if you type theme, uh, you can see this one has 2.7 million. And I think there's one that has more the where is it? There you go. Ma material theme UI has 13 million, but the rest is not even close to a million. So um, this is the theme I'm using one dark theme. And I also use it in combination with the material theme icons. So I don't use the ma uh, material theme, which is also a good theme. I use the icons from the Atom material icons here. So this is my design preference. We can go to a piece of code here from an old project, for example, the Flask REST API. And you can see here, okay, it hasn't loaded yet. As far as I see, yeah, there you go. So that is the syntax highlighting of the theme. Um, besides the theme, I think the most important plugin that I have here, or actually not besides the theme, it's the most important plugin I have because it's not a luxury. It's not a nice thing to have. It's for me a fundamental essential thing that I need in my editor. And this is Vim binding. So I don't know how many of you guys use Vim and how many of you guys use Vim bindings. But for me, not having Vim bindings is unacceptable. So I have the plugin called idea Vim. It's a plugin by JetBrains. Uh, this plugin here. So idea Vim, you can look for it, it has 11.2 million downloads. And essentially, it allows for Vim bindings for Vim controls inside of your uh, JetBrains IDE, be that uh, IntelliJ or PyCharm doesn't really matter. Uh, so this basically means that I can insert and I can write print Hello World, for example, then I can go inside of these quotation marks and I can type C I quotation mark to change the inner stuff inside of the quotation marks, I can say change word and all that. So you see me in all the videos, I use Vim bindings. Uh, this is a, a must for me, this is not a nice thing to have. This is not a good plugin. This is for me, if, a, if an editor does not have Vim bindings, or if an IDE does not have Vim bindings, I'm not going to use it. It I cannot use it. I always type uh, uh, colon WQ. And I always type uh, CW for change word and so on. I always use Vim binding. So this is the most fundamental plugin here. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know, they install it and they just use it. A lot of people don't know that there's also a Vim RC file. So I'm going to open it with my uh, Windows subsystem for Linux here, we can navigate to uh, the user directory. So on Windows, that's C users and your username. And here you're going to find a file called dot idea vim rc. So this is the file. And this is my config. Now, if you don't have the file, I think you have to create it. So just dot idea vim rc in the user directory of your user, obviously. Uh, and I think this was the default thing. And those two things are what I have uh, put in here manually, because you cannot install plugins for like vim plugins for uh, the idea of them. So you cannot use Vim plug and then install conquer of completion or anything like that or an airline or anything or nurtry. Uh, but there's some plugins that are supported. So for example, two of them are surround and commentary. And I actually like these plugins, what does surround do? 
uh, you ba basically have a couple of words, for example, hello world, what is up? And if I want to surround this what with parentheses, all I do is uh, I type Y S I W and then uh, parentheses to surround it. So I'm not going to explain Vim plugins here, but uh, you have the surround plugin and you also have the commentary plugin. So I can just type GCC to comment out a line and I can type uh, if I have multiple lines like that, I can uh, select them and GC comment all of them out. So I definitely need this plugin. It's the most important plugin in my setup. If I don't have idea of him, I, I could not use any JetBrains products if I didn't have idea of him or any other alternative. So that's it for the theme and for the idea of him plugin. What else do I have installed? Uh, I talked about the material icons. Then I have an interesting plugin called Key Promoter. And this is a plugin that I oftentimes ignore, but let's say I have a program here which is just a hello world program. What I oftentimes do is I just press this key here. So run main. And what you can see down here on the right, I hope I'm not blocking this, I shouldn't be blocking this, right? Yeah. Uh, what you see down here on the right is the key promoter, it tells me command run was missed 565 times. So you can see I pressed the button instead of using the shortcut 565 uh, times. And instead of that, I could have used shift F 10. So I can do it now. I can I can click this away. Do it again, shift F 10. There you go. And it ran this thing. Uh, and of course, I can also if I do it from here, if I do right click, and then run main, it says missed 566 times, I could just use control shift F 10 if I don't want to just run the same file as before. So control shift F 10 and I don't get the message. And of course, if for some shortcut, I don't want to use the shortcut. So for example, if I don't want to uh, know about this sh uh, shortcut anymore, I don't care about it, I can of course also say disable alert for this shortcut. And this works for all sorts of things. So for example, if I have something like my variable equals 10, and then I print my variable, and now I want to refactor it, what I can do is I can right click it, I can go to refactor rename. And you can see here rename is 35 times, I could have just used shift F six, like that. So this is a nice plugin uh, that I enjoy using, it's called key promoter x. So I'm gonna go to settings plugins, to my installed plugins, it's the where is it key promoter x plugin by Halley, Rutin, whatever. Uh, this is a plugin. And this is one of the plugins that I use to get better at navigating through PyCharm because Vim forces you to learn key bindings and PyCharm, you can use the mouse for everything. So yeah, then the next thing I would recommend you to use, of course, only if you're an experienced programmer to some degree. So if you're a beginner, don't do that. But what I would recommend you to do is I would recommend you to install an auto completion engine. So there are many different engines, you can go with tab nine, which I'm using because they sponsored a couple of videos. And they gave me the pro version for a year. So I'm using tab nine. There are also alternatives like kite and other things. So I would just recommend that if you are a somewhat experienced programmer, so you're not a complete beginner that learns about the basics of the language, I would recommend you use an auto completion engine because it speeds up your coding massively, especially if it is AI powered. So if it has some intelligence behind it, and also already predicts what you want to do. So for example, if I say, red is a maybe as a string, red is a color, then green is and it already knows is a color then B and it already says blue is a color. So this is an intelligent AI auto completion, they're not sponsoring this video, but they have sponsored a couple of videos in the past. So I'm still using them. But of course, um, there are also alternatives. So you don't need to go with tab nine, you can go with kite with or you can go with whatever you want. But I would recommend just using an auto completion engine um, to speed up your coding. So then another plugin that I recently uh, discovered is called, let's go to the settings. It's called where is it? Rainbow brackets. Rainbow brackets is just a minor style thing, but it helps a lot, especially if you have some long statements uh, with list comprehensions, whatever, and with a lot of function calls, uh, basically just colors the parentheses in different ways. So if I have uh, parentheses here, they're all green because they're on the same level. But if I open up another pair inside of the brackets, they're blue, then inside of that, they're purple, I think, 
and inside of that uh, they're dark green or something and then they're yellow again I think then they're green again right yeah so you just have these rainbow brackets of course also for the square brackets so just different colors so that you been, uh, that you know which one belongs to which one just a minor thing nothing nothing too special here uh, a minor thing that I added because it's kind of interesting the next plugin is a very interesting plugin. It's called string manipulation and I haven't used it too much. I installed it recently, but I haven't used it a lot while coding, but I think it's a very useful thing because essentially what it does is let's say I have my text and I have, this is a sample text for a video. What I can do now is I can right click here and I can use the string manipulation to do certain things. So for example, if I mark that word and I say, string manipulation and maybe what I can what what can I do here switch case for example screaming case there you go all uppercase um, if I right click and I say switch case to I don't know Pascal case uh, in this case it doesn't really do anything because it's a it's one word but I of, of course can I, I can of course also mark the whole sentence and do it here as well. So maybe you want to have this case here. There you go. This is a sample text for a video. So I can also go ahead and mark these words here and say, where is it? Swap words. So this is a sample becomes sample. This is a, um, so I think in this case, all it did is it swapped this with the left part. Um, I can also reverse the letters so I can go with reverse letters. There you go and all sorts of things. So I can also go ahead, for example, if I have something like HTTP, uh, something google.com slash uh, test question mark, I don't know, name equals something, whatever. And I wanna encode that, I can just go ahead, right click string manipulation, and I can encode this to URL. There you go. I can also use different encoding methods. So all in all, it's just a plugin that allows, uh, allows you to do string stuff easily without doing anything manually. So what do what else do we have here, we can encode, decode, escape, unescape, we can increment, we can sort, we can filter, we can grab and all that. So a plugin again, as I said, I didn't use it too much because I didn't have the opportunity yet to use it. I installed it a couple of days ago, but I think it's a very interesting plugin and I think that I'm going to use it quite often uh, in projects that are going to need a lot of uh, string string changing. So especially for encoding URLs, I think this can be very useful. Uh, so I think that's it for the main plugins and I have two more plugins that I would consider optional because um, one of them I oftentimes, dis uh, oftentimes disable because I don't really like it being active all the time. And the other one is something that I don't use, but I think it can be useful if you are working in projects that use it. So the first one is the color highlighter. I have it installed, but it's most of the time disabled. All it does is it basically previews a color. So if I have, for example, uh, I'm not sure if it works like that as well, but if I have color F, 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 yeah, it basically shows me the color here uh, and I can also change it. I think I can change it. Can I change it? Not sure. I mean, at least I can copy it from here, right? But it doesn't automatically replace it. Also, this doesn't seem right. However, it doesn't really matter. It basically previews the color. If you use it, I think it also works with color equals red, for example. I don't think by the way that it has to be color. Let's say test equals red. Yeah, works like that as well. Or like that. I'm not sure if RGB works. I doubt it, to be honest. Uh, but we can try. So 255, zero, zero. Does it work? No. Does it work if I go with 255, 255, zero? Does it work if I go with RGB, 255, 255, zero? Yeah, then it works. Okay. So as you can see, it's just a nice tool that you can use for working with colors, but most of the time uh, it's annoying if I don't really need it because when I type red, I know it's red. I don't need to preview for that. Uh, just a plugin that I wanted to mention. And the last plugin that I want to talk about is one that I don't use, 
but I think it can be useful and it's the MyPy plugin. MyPy is basically for type hinting, so you can provide type hints in Python, but Python is still dynamically typed, but if you wanna check for integrity, you can use MyPy. And this plugin allows you to do that inside of PyCharm without using the command line uh, to do it. So just a nice thing to have. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.